Lights, camera, action. Talk about stopping on a dime. Wait for it, it's in the net. I'm getting a little seasick. Look out, the puck is coming your way. Celebrate with us, all that is Cardinal Athletics. Sports Night is next. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joe Young. And I'm Howie Shapiro. And uh, another week quickly has gone by. Can't yeah, and, believe it. And we're starting playoffs for the girls' hockey team just next week. Yep. Or just this week, yep. actually, uh, getting underway. They Not quite sure where they'll place, but uh, having a great season and a great finish to the year. Yeah, you know, it's interesting looking at the at the section. I think Maple Grove definitely will be in front of them, but SLPCR has more wins than Maple Grove. 20 versus 18. Well, we'll get to the girls in just a minute. The boys hockey team entered last week's play with game two of three uh, of a three game road trip traveling to take on Armstrong Cooper. Wings are a little bit over 500, but definitely a beatable team. Cardinals lost the first meeting 4 3, so they knew they could skate with these guys and would have a chance to get a big conference win late in the year. No scoring until the second period, and just watch the speed. Jack Gorgian. Taking this one coast to coast, ends up leading the two on one. Toe drag to the backhand, slips it through the five hole. Wings on the board first. Cardinals answer less than 30 seconds later though. Colton Ryan able to get hold of the loose puck, skate to the slot, find the five hole on the other keeper. And we're tied at one. Armstrong Cooper power play though midway through the second. Kyle Sweeney walking off the board. Fires a laser past the glove hand of Hansen, and the Wings are back in front. Another power play late in the period, and a similar result. Pass is tipped. Sweeney stops and then fires a rocket through traffic and to the back of the net. 3 1 edge heading to the locker room after two. May never see another one like this one. Another power play opportunity. The shot is stopped. This one flipped the length and just stops on the still damp ice. Chase Crandall is there to clean it up and put the Cardinals back within one and it stays that way until right while well, we have to oh yeah that's right clean that Rest up. job never done I thought about waiting a minute but that uh, ah. set up a little bit better before he got started you wouldn't have to be doing that goes to the final minute though Cardinals pressuring with the extra attacker chip to center Andy Burns chases dives and sweeps it toward the empty net to give the wings the four to two win. Tough loss for the Cardinals. You know, they had that opportunity, the empty net goal at the end, but uh, they just couldn't They couldn't get over that hump. They couldn't. And, it, you know, this is, this is a team in Armstrong Cooper that has been in 4-2, four, 4-3 four, games all season yep. long. Uh, they've won a few more than they've lost, but that's their game. Cardinals maybe not as comfortable in those close scoring games, uh, and they come up short with the empty net. And, unfortunately, it happened again to them on Sunday. Taking on an Irondale team, they beat the first time around. The Knights even the series with a 5-3 win. They did have an empty net goal. Ty Hansen starting in net again made 41 saves for the Cardinals. Shots in this one were 45 apiece. Wow, a lot of action. So Car Cardinals did put some pressure on the other end, but only able to finish three times. Now look at the remaining schedule for the boys hockey team. They host Rogers tomorrow and Howie. We'll be there. Then Weather they close providing. with three ranked teams. They're at Centennial on Thursday, ranked number 15. They host Blaine on Saturday. The Bengals are number six right now. That's tough. And then they are at Elk River next Thursday, currently ranked number eight. That is a difficult schedule to close the season. And the Cardinals are looking for you know a little something to get over that hump, and they're going to have a tough time uh, yeah. getting a win, especially in those last three games. Yeah, you always want to get a little momentum going to the playoffs, but that schedule will make that – Mission very difficult. Girls hockey team, as we talked about, wrapped up the regular season last week. They were on the ice when we did uh, sports night last Monday. They were down in Austin, and they they walked away big winners. Nine A lot of goals. Uh, definitely overmatching the team from Austin. Brina Del Castillo had four points, a goal and three assists. Taylor Turnquist had two and one. Hannah Schultz and Lily Packett, Hackett each had a goal and two helpers. And Brandy. Del Castillo got on the leaderboard as well with three assists. Well, the girls are right back at it on Tuesday night when they were at the Super Rink looking to stay hot against the Irondale Knights. The girls beat the Knights 5-1 in the first meeting early in the season, but this one was a little bit different. Irondale gave the SLPCR squad all they wanted and were in this one to the very end. 
Scoreless game just over six minutes in. Iondale power play, but a turnover turns into a two-on-one. Brina with a great saucer pass to Turnquist for the finish. Shorthanded goals only tally in quite a while. Or I should say for quite a while. Wasn't for the lack of chances. Great passing to find Brina wide open in the slot, but the keeper able to close it down. SLPCR a 10-9 shot advantage after the first. Power play chance in the second. Turnquist leaves the puck for Hannah Schultz, who walks in. But Kaylee Ewell absorbs that one as well. She had 35 saves for Irondale. We're going to move to the third period. Knights on the rush. Frankie tips it in on Miller. She's able to get a little trouble handling it. Loses her stick in the process, but the puck is cleared away. We're going to go into the final six minutes. Still 1-0. SLPCR pressuring on the power play. and isn't the prettiest goal, but it counts. Brina able to finally poke it home, and that's all the scoring there was. And then the girls extend their win streak with the 2-0 win over the Knights. Yeah, and then they closed out the season on Saturday against Tatino. And again, they the Eagles able to stay right with them to the yep. end. Uh, Spring Lake Park Coon Rapids squad getting the winner in overtime. A 6-5 winner. Uh, Turnquist, two goals and an assist. Same for Brina Del Castillo. Three assists for Lily Hackett. Anna Hansen had, or Alyssa Hansen rather, had a goal and an assist, and Hannah Schultz had a goal for them as well. Look at that record, and though, 24 and 1. That's, yeah. that's a nice season. Yeah, they have been fantastic. Yes, they have. Uh, especially down the stretch. Um, a little bit of concern, maybe, at how close they let those last two games be. Uh, but they have to uh, be dominant in game one of the playoffs as a higher seed. They should be. And, and then they need to, if they are that three seed and going up against uh, a higher seed in the, in the second round, uh, they have to go out there and, and show them that, that maybe they could have been the number one. Well, goaltending obviously will be important, but, you know, I think they have the pieces that can, that can win that section. I think if they play their best hockey, they have a, a great chance, Joe. Yeah. Well, we will have uh, highlights of their – uh, tournament action for you next week on Sports Night, to be certain. Cardinals wrestling squad will wrap up the regular season schedule this week, and they're a little bit beat up. They have several key injuries in the lineup, but even healthy, they aren't really a match for Anoka this season. Tornadoes came into Thursday's match looking to reclaim the coveted Golden Shoes. They're currently ranked third in the state, and when you watch them, you know why. Cardinals were looking to do their best and hopefully weather the storm a bit on senior and alumni night, but the Tornadoes were just downright devastating. They had bonus points in each of the first six matches, including three pins and two tech falls. Only the 106-pound match went beyond the second period. Noka won the first eight weight classes and already had won the match with a 39-0 lead and six matches left when the Cardinals finally broke through. It's Joey Bothwell that finally gets the home team on the board at 160 pounds. He was down 4-2 at that point, got lifted off his feet, but comes down with the headlock, puts DeLeon right to his back at the buzzer for a 6-4 lead going to the third. He held on for an 8-6 decision. The only other win for Coon Rapids comes at 2-20. Nick Halseth outscored his opponent 10-1 in the second period on his way to an 11-4 decision. Tornadoes reclaimed the Golden Shoes, though, with emphasis. Five pins, three technical falls, and a 59-6 victory. Yeah, they came out so quickly. Really, the Cardinals didn't really, you know, they're injured. We talked about that, and they're missing some, some wrestlers, but they really didn't have an opportunity to get in this one no. at all from the, from the beginning of this match. Well, and I remember talking to Coach Springer before the match last year, uh, and he said, you know, this really isn't our year, but next year, watch out. Yeah, and, they're, and, they're impressive. And Coach Adams before this year said, yeah, um, we're hoping for three wins. Yeah, exactly. And they only ended up with two. Uh, wrestling team right back at it over the weekend for the Blaine duels on Saturday. Uh, and they took out a little bit of their frustration. They beat up on the Rosemont Irish 66-11 in the first round and then beat Elk River for the second time this season, 46-28. They come up just shy in the... Uh, final against Egan, 34-28. But there are some of your top performers, Hank Lovick and Luke Paltrow, along with Joey Bothwell, all 3-0 on Saturday with a pair of pins. Nick Halsa and Josh Bryant were both 3-0 as well. Each of them had one pin. And for the wrestling team, they're at Blaine on Friday. And Howie? We'll be there. 
and then they will travel to Foley on Saturday and face a very, very highly ranked double A team. Yeah, that's going to be that's going to be a tough one. Coach Tronton thought maybe we were coming to the Foley match. He said, you should come to Blaine, you know, and I said, we're coming to Blaine. We'll be there. Absolutely. Well, we're not we're not driving to Foley. No, no, no. Can't take the show. And the helicopter's the busy this weekend anyway. Right. So, well, <laughs> Moving, <clears throat> vaulting right along. Uh, gymnastics team got one victory or one event last week, and they got a victory. Uh, the girls continue to score well into the mid, you know, to the upper 120s. A 127.15 against Irondale. Uh, Hannah Gross, first place in the vault, the bars, and the beam. First in the all-around as well. Callie Lawrence was second on vault. And... Uh, second on bars as well. Um, a nice night for Hannah Gross. A big win for the Cardinals. They improved their record to three and four. They are at Elk River on Thursday and Elk River, another one of those teams uh, with just a lot of real top level uh, traveling type talent. Uh, and then the section seven double A tournament will be uh, a week from Friday. Nice to see him getting a little over 127 yeah, this they, week. And they had one well. last week as Correct. well. So they're, they're looking for those 130s. They're, they, getting, they're getting they're close. They're getting close, they, but not much time left to try and hit Definitely 130. Definitely not. Well, the swimming and diving team will wrap up the regular season this week before getting some time to trim times before sections. Last week, the Cardinals were visiting team in the annual meeting with the pool mates, the Blaine Bengals. The Cards put up some good times, but the Bengals took control early, and the outcome was never in doubt. Great start for the Cardinals. The 200 medley relay squad posted the second best time of the season for Coon Rapids. Seventh grader Matthew Struss started in the backstroke. Freshman Andrew Trunk swam the, the breaststroke with sophomores Alex Schmidt and Pierre, and Pierre Nahar finishing up the fly and free, respectively. They take second place in a time of 156.22. Blaine swept the podium the next three events before Alex Schmidt put an end to the run in the 100 fly. Schmidt sails to the wall in a time of 102.31 with another second place finish. In all, 21 of the 24 kids swimming had a personal best against Blaine. Bengals done scoring by this time, we had to get back to the 100 back, but a great race for Andrew Trung. He is just a quarter second away from a legitimate first place finish with an impressive 107.44. But the Bengals, as we talked about, ran away with this in the beginning. They're gonna win this with a 95-78 final score. Yeah, and, and it surprised Coach Donaldson a little because he didn't expect Blaine to swim as fast as they no. did. However, he was very uh, impressed with how the guys swam, the times they were turning in. And continuing, he's, he's you know, he had the girls in the fall, and he was really impressed uh, as they got to this point in the season at, at how far they've come. Um, and with the boys, he's like, and they continue to go. They haven't plateaued at all. They keep getting faster. Um, and, you know, it's just about time, as you talked about, to trim for sections. They did have a tournament over the weekend at Cambridge Isani. Uh, the Cardinals coming out in eighth place in that event. N ninth place finish for the 200 medley relay. Uh, Alex Schmidt had the top finishes, a fifth place finish in the 200 free, and a third place finish in the 500 free. Uh, Russell was ninth place off the board, and Andrew Trong was 10th place in the 100 fly. They're Up young. You know, Joe, they're young. Oh, we they talked are. about it. And also, they're, and they're yes, trimming times young. as they go, continuing the season. And, and that, that's great for this squad. Absolutely. They are at Osseo on Thursday. The Section 7 AA championships will be held uh, Thursday through Saturday, the 25th and 27th of February. Nordic ski team competing in the Northwest Suburban Conference pursuits last week. The girls finished in ninth place overall. Olivia Ellenbecker, the 23rd best place. Abby Ellenbecker, two spots behind her. Emily Ford in 53rd. Ibby ha Izzy Haberman in 64th place. And Curran finished in 83rd. For the boys, a little bit better finish as a team, a sixth place finish. Matthews with a 14th place finish in 33 minutes, 25.25. Paul Breitbach in 23rd. Petrov finished 40th with Nate Muggenberg in 42nd and Mitch Zandorowski finishing in 49th place. Uh, section four uh, tournament coming up on Thursday of this week and then the state championships next Thursday. Uh, both of those are the section four championship at least is going to be up at Giants. I be believe both of those events are at Giants Ridge. I know the Alpine ski team will have their section tournament on Thursday at Giants Ridge. And then 
<laughs> the state tournament will be next Wednesday also at Giants Ridge. And I'm, it's not because of what I'm reading, but what's happening when I'm looking out into TV land. It's, and our it, teleprompter has completely disappeared. Yeah, it's gone. So, you know, that's going to stretch us it's gonna. We're going to have fun the last couple of uh, Somebody couple get my reading glasses right. for me, please, because I won't be able to see the script. Uh, uh, moving right along, boys basketball team started last week with a trip to Elk River. Or they, they hosted Elk River. Excuse me, the girls went to Elk River. And the boys lost 74-64 to the Elks. Nick Keller, 22.7 boards. Jake Domovic had 18 points and three rebounds. Marcus Rask, 10 points, six assists. Tyreon Johnson doing it all. Six points, nine rebounds, six assists. And Dio Lawal, five points, eight steals, and five rebounds. Well, if there were ever a game that got away, it was last Thursday's game against oh, Anoka. It was tough. For the boys' basketball team, they had everything going their way. And then the wheels just fell off. You know, it also doesn't help that my director can't see the cues for when to switch cameras or when to roll <laughs> video either. Cardinals lost the first game against Anoka, but they knew they could roll with the Tornadoes. Even without a couple of players who were sidelined to injury, they came out and were downright dominant for the first five minutes, and they maintained a lead well into the second half. Roll video. <laughs> All right, Coon Rapids started the scoring from the perimeter. Jake Dumovic spotting up off the inbound and dropping it. Marcus Rask hit another three on the next possession. It was quickly 6-0. And they keep the tempo up off the block by Keller. Rask on the run. Great bounce pass to fight Tyreon Johnson at the rim. And Tyreon was everywhere for an Oak against Anoka. He'll get the rebound and the assist right here. Nice finish by Keller. Cardinals started with a 19-2 lead. No pressuring and starting to cut into the lead, but pressing too much, and the Cardinals catch him. Rask down court. Lawal across the lane to Demovic, slashing in. He gets the bucket and the foul. He had 19 points to lead all scorers. Still, the Tornado's able to get back within 11 at the half, and they come out strong in the second. Joey Losey hit a couple of early three-pointers to get it back to a 38-35 game very quickly. The Cardinals just completely out of rhythm in the second half. They only made six baskets. And the Tornadoes cha charged ahead with the momentum, finally grabbing the lead about midway through. Then they cracked off an 11-0 run, and that pretty much did it for the Cardinals. 62-50 the final in that one. I just want to point out Tyreon Johnson, 10 points, 10 rebounds, 6 blocks, 6 assists, and three steals. He was all over the place. You know, really, the Cardinals, as we talked about in, in That the was absolutely... I. One of the most heartbreaking losses I've I've witnessed in Cardinal you history. You could tell the tone in our voices in the, from the first half to as the second half started to progress. You know the Cardinals played so well in that first half, and, and they really they really were strong. And they, they let uh, they let Noka get back into it a little bit, but I believe they led by nine. Was it nine at Correct. the break? Correct. And then they couldn't do anything in that second half, and they they just they just could not come credit. Out. And credit Anoka, they did a great job credit of getting the tornadoes. back. Yeah, they did. They absolutely. really shut Demovic down. But uh, Tyreon, just an amazing game for the Cardinals, both ends of the court. Great hustle. Um, it was a lot of fun to watch him play, even in the losing part of it, yep. uh, because he. I mean, a lot of guys out there that had heart, but he really had an impact with heart at both ends of the floor. You all all. The full game. You could see his frustration towards the end of the game yes. because, you know, he played so well, and, and the team, unfortunately, ended up giving that game away, you know, and, the, and we talked about that was the one opportunity they had, at least in front of us, to, to get that win, and unfortunately, yeah. they couldn't get it done. Cardinals at Centennial on Tuesday. They host Osseo on Thursday, and now that we've got the uh, Just in time teleprompter back, how he... It's how he's turned. Uh, girls basketball team, all, as I mentioned, traveled to Elk River last Tuesday. They got trampled by they the did. Elk. 78-44. Kaylee Porridge, 13 points. Ellie Carver added 10. Brianna Clark had 8. And Caitlin Ackerman added 7. Yeah, good, to see, good to see Carver score in double digits as well. I know that uh, they've been looking for that early from the season, and, and she's been able to do that in the last couple of games. Well, and much like the boys, they just can't let games get out of hand, and they can't panic too Cons early. Consistency. 
Well, the road didn't get any easier for the Lady Cardinals on Friday when they traveled to Anoka to take on the Tornadoes. Anoka had won seven of their previous eight games and were sitting in second place in their division. They nearly doubled the Cardinals up the first time around, but this time would be a, quick, a little bit closer. Tornado is able to get out to the early lead, starting with a defense. Abby Slater with the steal. She'll run the floor and find Naomi Torgerson alone on the wing for the three. Anoka is up 7-0. Kudos to the Cardinals for not hanging their shoulders. They fire back instead. Porsche working in the post, kicks it out to Carly Anderson, and she hits the three, one of her own. Going to go late in the half. Great rotation by the Cardinals. Hagstrom will find Kaylee Porsche at the back door. She had team high 18. The Cardinals went three at the break. Tornado's able to charge out of the locker room quickly and spread the lead a bit. Abby Slater with an open look from the corner makes it an eight-point cushion. Marina Nyberg had 12 points for the Cardinals. Big assist right here. Big three-pointer for Nicole Fraser to get the lead back with, within single digits. But it's as close as they would get. Tornado's hold on for the win. Good look to find Brittany Bongarts down low. Two of her 18. And Anoka's going to get the 57-49 win. And, you know, we talked about it. We mentioned it during the, during the game, the boys game. Uh, or the, uh, yeah, the boys, was it the wrestling? Yeah, it was wrestling we mentioned it. They played Friday, correct? Correct. And um, they were close at the break. But then again, it's the tale of uh, two halves for both well, basketball it, squads. But it shows a lot of improvement. A team that, oh, that lost by 30-plus by points first time around uh, to keep them within distance this time. But... Uh, yeah, both basketball teams struggling with consistency and the ability to finish in the second half, really. Well, and as the season comes to a wind, a wind down to the sections, this is the, kind, the time of season that the Cardinals want to play well and they want to put some consistency, consistency together. They're looking to find that. Yeah, the Cardinals host Centennial on Tuesday. They are at Osseo on Thursday. And, Howie, we had a busy week last week. Not we did. quite as much action uh, this week, Almost. But, we'll, but we'll get out there. We'll see some wrestling again, but first we're going to see the boys hockey team in action against Rogers. That's live at 7.30 on Tuesday. Wrestling at Blaine live at 7 o'clock on Friday. And then next Monday, we're going to move the show so we can do some boys basketball against the Andover Huskies on Monday. We'll do sports night Tuesday. Make sure you mark that in your next calendars. Week. Yeah. But that's going to do it for this edition of Sports Night. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN. For the entire crew, including the one and only Brandon Rickards behind the lens, that's Howie Shapiro. I'm Joe Young. Good night.